What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with uh, Mark Riddell. What's going on, mate? Yeah, not too much. Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Mate, I, uh, obviously, we, I've been watching some of your radio sh- the show on 2GB, mm. and uh, you do some calls on the weekend. Yeah. How, how is, I guess, p- post-footy, but also still being involved in the game, do you, are you enjoying it just as much? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I really enjoyed it. I suppose uh, being still involved in the game every week's great, mm. um, but you don't have the, the sore body or anything like that. Yep. You know, man, um, I was pretty lucky because I, I come out, I retired, and then pretty much the next year I started with, with 2GB on the sideline, so I was always in and around the game still. So it sort of developed from there. And as you said, you know, I got... Um, Got a brekkie show on that now that we do in Sydney and um, and then doing the games on the weekend, you know, you still stay in touch with everyone, yep. still see everyone, you know, all the boys and that, so it's yeah. pretty good. It's, uh, it is, I think it is important to kind of keep some kind of contact mm. with with the community or, or the boys because there was a, like, I feel like a lot of people do this because they want to get away from the game so bad, yeah. they're just like, I can see you later. Away out of it, yeah. And then before you know it, you're kind of like, mate, I miss, like, I've got no camaraderie. Like, yeah. I, got, I don't, yeah. don't get the, you know, the banter with the boys on the weekend. And, you yeah. know, like, it's not the same as, you know, mate, you might go to work, but it's not really the same as, you know, a footy, the footy team. Nah, it's mate, footy team. I, don't, I don't care what anyone tells you. The camaraderie you get with the boys in yeah. footy is the best that you'll ever have, you yeah. know. I don't think that, that uh, there would be too many workplaces out there that would be this <laughs> very similar at all. Um, yeah, look, I, I think a, a lot of players would probably miss that the most. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, look, I because I, I stayed involved pretty much straight away, I, I did a little bit of coaching at the Roosters in the lower grades and that, mm. so that sort of kept me involved. And then um, I sort of had to, you know, decide to go into the media a little bit more because I was getting more and more work, which was great. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I still get a buzz about going to the footy each week, you know. Yeah. The first round, I... I got to sat, sit on the sideline, watch Roosters and, and the Bunnies go, you know, toe to toe. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's pretty special. You know, I've done Origins now. I've done Grand Finals. Fuck, and that? Yeah, it's, it, it is. It, it is really good. Well, one, I never won a competition in the NRL. <laughs> so, man, it's it's great. You know, I was you – know, I, I say this to a lot of people. You know, I was there when Thurston and the Cowboys won their first premiership on the, on the field, you know, 30 seconds – Trying to get trying to get interviews, you know, because yeah, that's yeah. what you got to do. Uh, I was there when the Sharks won their first yep, premiership. Yep, yep. Gallen, Ennis, Lewis, Wade Graham, you mm. know. Um, I, I, well, the, well, we tell a funny story actually. Like I went on there when the Sharks, and as a sideline eye, you got to get on there and you got to try and get yeah. blokes, and it's really hard because yeah, Fox are trying to do it. Yep. TV's try uh, Nine's doing it. Your other radio stations are all doing it. So the two people I got were Jack Bird, who every second word was F this, F that. <laughs> and then I got, oh, mate, I doubled up beautifully because the next bloke I got was Chris Heinington, oh, who we all know has <laughs> done his Tigers thing. So, But, mate, it was great. And yep. I suppose being able to still, well, enjoy it in a way, you know, because yeah. you're out there working, but, you know, see, see the emotion from the Cowboys, yeah. you know, the Sharks. Um, so, mate, it, it's been really good. The Roosters last year was great as well because... Played with a few of those boys that are still knocking about with the Roosters, and to yep. see them win a comp was great. So, and it's you're in the tough spot because you know, as a journalist, mm. you've always been. So let's say you're a journalist from you know 18 years old, yeah. old you've got that one aim, and that's to get the story. But you're yeah. a footy player, yeah. So like you're sitting there going, I don't want to ruin the boys' moment by pestering them. And, and you know what, I get I get bagged a little bit by our guys at GB because sometimes I'm a bit standoffish on yep. the sideline because. I've been there. I yeah. know what it's like. You know, sometimes after a game, even though you've won, you don't want a microphone shoved in your face. No You're way. huffing and puffing. The siren goes, but that's what I've got to do. So, you know, that's that's my job. I try and be as, I suppose, as respectful and everything as I can because I've, um, you know, well, both of us, we've, we've been in that situation, haven't we? Where yeah. Well, I mean, you've been in more than me, bro. <laughs> man, full time. You know, you've just finished. You want to enjoy the win with all the boys. and Yeah. You know, you've got all the media there, but the reality is, is that the players have got a responsibility now to, to do those things. So, yep. you know, we've got to get the interviews and the stories after the game. It's, uh, I think it's, as you said, it being a part of that moment though, mm. again, yeah. especially because you've been a footy player, yeah. it would mean a bit more to you than say a journo yeah. that doesn't really get what it takes to get there. Yeah, just the emotion, not surprise me because... Um, 
I just I just enjoyed it, you know. I, I, like for t- talking about the Cowboys victory and when was that fifteen? Yep. Um, you know, I can remember the emotion from Jake Granville. Uh, I can remember the tears from Lockie Coote in being able to interview him straight after the yep. game and just see how much it meant to him, um, how much emotion was involved. And you know, you're right. Yeah, you, you know what they've gone through. They've been yeah. it's been starting from November the previous year, and then finally it all. Um, comes to a head and they win the grand final, especially the way they did. You know, it was. Mate, I was, was I was in the special. stands, uh, mm. like obviously I'm you know, Broncos fan, yeah. playing for the Broncos and that. But I remember like 45 or probably 60 in, like I was, you know, a bit of banter with the boys. Like, yeah. I was like, this is boring, yeah. easy. <laughs> this is an easy win, just yeah. like talking nonsense yeah. to everyone because I had all Cowboys fans around me, like boring. This well, they were trying to like... shut it down, weren't they? The yeah. Broncos late and playing slow and kicking in the touch. Yeah. And... and I was just like, this is too easy, boys. Yeah. Take it, pack her up. We've won this. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then yeah. before you know it, Thurston and Michael, Mo- I mean, Michael Morgan in that. I, don't get me wrong, Thurston was unbelievable. And I think it was the impact of him finally getting that premiership. Yeah. Of that course. was great. Yeah. But when you look at Morgan's performance and mm. that last play he did. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely absurd. Yeah, it was. It was freaky. I was actually positioned on about the uh, 20 meter line in that corner where it felt went over for the try. Yep. So I actually sat right behind JT when he kicked that oh. missed goal that hit yep. the upright that took him in the golden points. Hits so, the upright. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So like with the role that I've got now, it's those moments that, yeah. you know, you just sort of pinch yourself that you're able to enjoy that. You know, mm. well, another one comes to mind is the Origin Series win for the Blues last oh, year. Oh, yeah, yep, yep. I was on the field. I think I got the first interview with Freddie Fittler oh, after he yeah. just coached yep. New South Wales. His first year, everyone, you know, mm. knows the story about Freddie coming on board and doing different things. Mm. To be able to be right there and then and, and get that, you know, with Freddie was was phenomenal. So, you know, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing. And I, it's funny thing, I don't, I'm not sure about yourself, but I feel like when I was playing, like, don't get me wrong, I was never sitting there going, oh, I deserve this and like, this is great or whatever. But there was a sense of like, I definitely didn't appreciate what was going on. Like, you know, you, I didn't mm. appreciate the achievements. I didn't appreciate that we're running out in front of 50,000 people. I guess because you're, you know, conditioned mm. to not let those moments pressure you. Yeah. But I was, I feel like the further I get away from footy, the, the more I'm kind of like, wow, that was fucking pretty amazing. Yeah. Like, how good was that? <laughs> and so I guess with yourself, like when I speak to the boys and I hear their stories and, you know, mm. yourself on the field speaking yeah. to the boys, you're sitting there, I, I assume, going as well, like, this is amazing, guys. Like, this oh, is yeah. Great. Yeah, no doubt. And, and I think it, it'd be like most of the players that have retired. Yeah. You sort of, once you sort of retire, then you sit back and you go, you know, that was mad. You know, yeah, that, yeah. like I tell everyone, that was probably the best part of my life, mm. you know, like that. 12 years, 13 years, however long I was in the game. It goes like that. You know, it goes so quick. Yeah. But you look back and, you know, on the field, great fun and being able to do it for as long as I did, tremendous, you know, but off the field as well. And you go back to, you know, like the the camaraderie thing with the boys and having a beer and having a bit of fun. You know, I, um, I look back at all that and think, mate, it couldn't have been any better. You know, living the dream, that's for sure. Living. So what, what are your thoughts on, like, if you could, some the current state of footy up. Mm. What what would you would you say positive or negative on or? the field? Yeah, on the field. <laughs> <laughs> we all yeah, know. Yeah, look, field. look. I got to say, look, I I enjoy the game now. That I think that everything they've brought in with the games probably had to be brought in in regards to you know shoulder charges mm. going, and now we've got the concussion protocol and everything like that. You know, player welfare with that whole concussion situation. There's no doubt that that's got to have been brought in. Um, the game itself and the way it's refereed. Round one was pretty good, you know, yep. on the weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought last year it was terrible. Yeah. thought last year they ruined probably the first 15 or 16 rounds with all those penalty crackdowns yep. and the like. Um, it just really changed the game and slowed the flow of the game down. Yeah. What I liked about round one was the fact that there was a lot of grind back into the game. A lot of teams going set for set for yeah. set for set. Yep. Just waiting, you know, waiting for the fatigue to kick in, yep. waiting for someone to either give away a penalty or, or a hole inside yeah tail, just right? something yeah. you know yeah. something that you know fatigues played a part or you know they've made an error and mm. then they capitalize on it whereas last year i thought it was get the ball someone to get a penalty they march up the other end of the field score a try or then the other team would get a penalty and the, the game never got a flow about yeah, it that's so. very true it was very like very like not nfl like but mm. closer to nfl than it's ever oh, no been. doubt it's rugby stop, union stop, stop. and nfl yeah just and and you know, like 
a lot of people talk about changing the interchange and bringing that down, which is which is a great sort of chat to have. But if you're going to have the amount of penalties that we had last doesn't year, matter. it doesn't matter, does yeah. it? You know, because the forwards are getting the yeah. arrest. So you know, the fact they've brought down the uh, the time limit for the dropouts and the time limit for the scrums and the fact that the referees are letting everything flow a little bit more, you bring that fatigue back into the game. So. I thought we got, considering the weather and everything, we thought we got some decent footy in stages. Oh, I, I yeah. agree. And I think I, I think that last year, the referee was bad. Refereeing, mm. as in not the refereeing, I think that the system that they were yeah, the way they use, refereeing. Yeah, no doubt. That was, the, that was the issue. But I think the biggest issue was coming out and saying, we're going to crack down. Yeah. On it's like yeah. you're literally painting a target on your back yeah. to, well, for, for failure. Well, yeah, and I don't know what you think, but every ruck, every 10 metres... You could find something to penalise, oh, and they nitpicked and they nitpicked at the ruck when teams were camped on the uh, their own the you know, the opposition's line, and it, it just wasn't a good sight, you yeah. know. So especially you know, when you add in, I think if you add in the unnecessary penalties, like he didn't put his foot on the ball, yeah. like yeah. let's say there's three of them in a game, mm. and you add that onto the other ten penalties, mm. that's when it starts becoming mate, like what is doing? Yeah, like, yeah. come on. Yeah, look, as long as it's. You know, like as long as it's close enough, yeah, in the instance of playing the ball, as long as yeah. they make the action, it's close yeah. enough, play on, like yeah. let him go. Like it doesn't affect the play at all. No, nah, that's right. That's yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest points is that yeah. it's not affecting the play. Yeah. Um so yeah, look, I I've enjoyed the I've enjoyed the footy this year, the first round. So hopefully the referees continue to referee yeah. the same and we get yeah. a good year. I agree. So take us back to a, a young mark, where'd you grow up? Uh what was it like? Yeah, um, look, I grew up in Panania, which is sort of southwest Sydney. Uh, yep. I've been a Sydney boy my whole life. Um, played junior footy with St Christopher's Panania, so that was pr- probably one of the more successful clubs to produce a few first grade oh, players. Really? So um, yeah, played there for you know ten years or so. Um, geez, out of that, the, you know, myself, Glenn Hall, who played a lot of football, yep. won a premiership. He's one of my best mates. He was playing there. Uh, yeah, Brent Sherwin, who won a comp with the Bulldogs. Yep. So um, he was one of the first to sign like a fucking six-year deal. Five-year deal. Five year yeah, deal. That signed was a five year deal. Then. Nowadays, bloody like ten-year deal. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah, yeah, I know. Five-year deals, deals normal these days, isn't it? Ten-year deals are the <laughs> more special thing. Yeah, but we had you know we had a few guys go on and play first grade. So, mate, I did that. And then uh, I played uh, Bulldogs Harold Matthews, which is the 16s comp mm. these days. And then I went to the Roosters. I signed a small little contract to yep. go to the Roosters. What was your first contract size? Man, I think it was like three grand, hey? It was four grand. Was it really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was... Mine was 1990... End of 1996, it was. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I was going into school into town in St. Mary's Cathedral College and signed a yeah $3,000 deal <laughs> to look after school fees and... Uh, buy anything related to yeah. school so i think i've still got the contract at home oh really yeah Fine yeah, yeah. My, my parents kept most of all that stuff so i've got all that stuff somewhere so was it something mm. that you know you're obviously part of a good rugby league side or mm. club growing up but i feel like especially in those days there's no internet to learn that okay i'm on like you know i'm on the path here to play in a role yeah. how, how at what point were you sitting there going I want to play NRL or I might play Man, NRL. I, I, well, my parents sort of tell me from a kid, from oh, a really? little kid. Yeah, they like, um, they, it's funny, they tell stories like I used to get the big, my dad would buy the big leg obviously yeah. each week and they reckon that I, I read it like a Bible oh, and yeah. I would know every player from every grade in every club. I would sit down and do stats on every <laughs> game that I watched on TV. There was no Fox in that then, but yeah. whatever game I could watch, I would watch. Um, my parents used to buy me rugby league videos so I could watch like the the stars of the game and um, so you just loved it. Yeah, I just always loved footy. I've always loved it since a little kid. Always watched it. Um, I've I've still got it to this day where yeah I get the big league each week at the footy. You know when I go yep. to to commentate <laughs> and I'll go through every game of every team wow. of every grade. Yep. Sydney Shield, Ron Massey Cup. Yep. You know, Queensland Cup and just see where all, especially round one, mm. you want to see where every player's gone, who's gone where, what, yeah, in those yeah. sort of lower grades. Yep. So that's just, you know, that's just something that I've always done, but I enjoy. So I think, you know, I was really young. I always wanted yep. to be a be a footy player and I suppose about learning the game and that. I grew up with two older brothers, so you know, you yeah. just you learn from your brothers. Yeah. You get bashed, yeah. you get the shit bashed out of you, and that's that's just what happens. You yeah. know, like um, 
you learn from your two older brothers. Well, that's what I did. And, you know, you get on that path of yeah. you're aware, you know, junior reps and you start training a bit more and it gets mm. a bit more serious and yep. then go from there. So I spent five years in the juniors at the Roosters once oh, I moved wow. over there. So was Roosters always your team? Like that you supported? No, no, no. Bulldogs. Bulldogs. I, was, I was a Bulldogs junior. So I played all my Canterbury Bankstown uh, juniors there. Yep. And then played one year in the 16s with the Bulldogs. And then I left and went to the Roosters. Okay. So, yep. Um, mate, spent five years at the Roosters in the juniors. Yeah. Wow. Playing in different grades. And so did you make all the rep sides growing up or not? Yes, no. Kind yeah, of? yeah, I did. Um, I played New South Wales 17s, City under 18s. Captain the Australian schoolboys in '98, so, okay. so so you were again. You, it wasn't like you know late bloom or anything. No, nah, I wasn't one system. of those. Yeah, yeah, I sort of yeah. I'll probably yeah, and I, and I went to. I ended up transferring and um, going to Holy Cross Ride, a footy school sort of thing. So yep. that then enabled me to be able to play in the good school rep sides to go into you yep. know the schoolboys and that we had a yeah we had a good Australian schoolboys team. You know, Gaznia. Hodges, Justin Hodges. Oh, Hodge really? was only young. He was only 16, I think. I mean, he would have been not a rat bag at all. Right. <laughs> he was good value, mate. We had Finchie, Brett Finch. Oh, really? Well, Finchie and I were good mates, so... Um, you right? Yeah, keep going. Mate, Finchie and I have sort of been really good mates since then. Yeah. So, mate, I was hooker and he was um, he was halfback, so... Um, I think s- they say 17 out of the 20 players went on to play first grade in that wow. squad. So it was a- Ashley Harrison, Ash Harrison oh, was yeah, there. Yeah, he was Origin as well, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, playing Origin. Yeah, so mate, we had a we had a really good team. Uh, Alan Tung, I remember Luke Burt. Oh mate, there was there was a heap. So yeah, it was good fun. Good fun. That's playing crazy. That's teams. I mean, that's pretty. You know, the names you just mentioned like Gaznia, Hodjo, hmm. Burt, uh, Harris. Like I haven't, I can't think of another side Australian, you know, junior mm. side that's not only had like the those like NRL players, but you know, rep players rep as players. well. Yeah. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, it was a good team. We um, yeah, we went to New Zealand for a few Test matches and the like. But yeah, I, I suppose seventeen out of the twenty, you know, you might probably get half a dozen to ten, maybe I don't know. Yeah. But I think they said they used to say seventeen went on and played first wow. grade. So I wonder why that is. Like, do you reckon it's because like maybe careers are longer now, or and so that that those positions don't open up as much, therefore less players from junior reps go on to play NRL. Because like, I wouldn't know, players, man. man. I reckon I reckon there could be a lot of contributing factors. You know. The competitions they're playing in now, yep. I'm not too sure. But it's 17, wow, that's, yeah, that's crazy. it was a it was a, a big conversion rate for yep. that year, definitely. Um, so so yeah, you, so you 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 essentially you're captain the Australian side mm. and you're at the Roosters, but I assume that Dragons came in with a really good offer. Yeah, not really. Hey, well, what happened? <clears throat> oh, mate, oh, well, that was '98. I played '99 and 2000 at the Roosters in flag, mm. which is like their 19s or 20s or whatever they want to call it, and Probably looking back, man, I went off the rails a little bit, you know, like yep. I think I thought I was too good yeah. and, you know, you've played Australia, you've done this, Young you've done that. I thought, I, maybe I thought, you know, that was the natural progression. I should be playing first grade. Yep. And it never happened at the Roosters. They had some some good dummy halves already there. Mm. And, um, mate, the club, literally I remember uh, Graham Murray grabbing me at training one day. He was the Roosters first grade coach at the time and he just sat me down on a bench at the training ground and he just said, Mark, you're not going to play first grade here, but you will play first grade and I wish you all the best and I hope you play first grade, but I just can't let you, not let you, but I can't get you to play first grade here. You know, there's just too much of a a roadblock, you know, with dummy halves and everything there. So So it wasn't wasn't attitude that he was saying that? Well, I don't think so at that point in time, not from him, but I sort of thought anyway my time had, yeah. My time had come to move on you at the Roosters. Feel it. You feel, you it, feel yeah. it, yeah. Like, uh, you know, you've got to go up in, then into reserve grade. You know, as I said, the Roosters already had a, a mountain of hookers in that. So you know. was this, what, 1996? It was 2000, 2000. 2000, yeah. So the Roosters won the comp 2001? No, 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 two. Two. Yeah, so yeah. they were kind of building into that. Yeah, yeah. Dominant. Well, the two, in two thousand, I think they played the Broncos and lost to the Broncos in the grand. So final. they were one of the best. That, that yeah, was a period yeah, they of time were one of the really good teams. Best. Simon yeah. Benetti was the hooker. Yeah, yep. for the Roosters, he was a solid. Was Freddie there yet? Player. Yeah, Freddie was there. Yeah, yep. Freddie had been there since ninety six. So, okay, mate. They, they, well, Anthony Minicello is a good mate, a great mate of mine. We went through that whole Roosters Bucky period was together. Yeah, 
He was on the wing that I think that day in the you know he'd been eighteen or nineteen. That, oh wow, well, the count. So you know, and then yeah, they had such a great side and yep. the players there. So mate, I got a I got a deal with the Dragons. I don't even remember if I had any more offers. I can't really yeah. remember, but I got an offer for twenty grand to go to the Dragons, and it was actually. I laugh about it now because it was actually less money than I was already on to play Jersey Flag. Oh, wow. I was getting paid, I think, 30, 30 or 35000 to play Flag. But I went to the Dragons for 20000 but with some really good incentives, you know, okay. if you played first grade. So, were you, so were, you, were you also part of the first grade squad when you did that? Yeah, so I went into the train on squad yep. play on twenty grand, <laughs> which is nothing anyway, but... Probably a little bit more back in 2001 than what yeah. it is today. Well, know, I was playing first grade on 50 grand. Yeah. And no there match you go. And yeah. I fucking already played like 20 games or whatever. It's crazy. Yeah. So I did that. And then, yeah, like I was I was pretty lucky, man. I yeah. um, trained with the first grade squad the whole preseason, end of 2000 into 2001, and played the trials. And then Nathan Brown, um, he hurt his neck in the last trial, never played again. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I literally played the round one because so of it how that conversation come about the debut the debut is always memorable well well it's well I, I remember the day nathan brown because well going back i remember the day i signed at the dragons and nathan brown just happened to be in the cogra leagues club at mm. the office at that time when i was signing oh, okay. the contract yep. and i walked out just as i'd signed the contract and he was standing there and he said introduced himself and it just blew me away he knew who i was and i, yep. I was signing he knew i was a dummy half and he said, right, oh, you're with me. I'll see you. you. Come to my house tomorrow. You're training. Oh, wow. And that blew me away straight away, you know, yeah. with Brownie. So literally Brownie took me under his wing from there and just trained and trained and trained. Taught me. Well, I'd probably look back now and he's probably the one who taught me the most about being wow. a, a dummy half. You know, I probably, to tell you, I probably have never told Brownie that, yeah. you know, but... The stuff that I learned off him and a guy called, I don't know if you're aware of Max Ninnis no. down at the Dragons, a skills coach. He, he, Maxi passed away last year, but between Nathan Brown and Maxi Ninnis were probably the two most important or biggest influences on how I played and how I read the game and everything as a dummy half these days. That's uh, for people, I mean, for him to just go, right, you're with me. Yeah. That's, I mean, in my personal experience, that's an uncommon occurrence in a first yeah. grade squad for the number one hooker. Well, he was the captain of the club. And the captain yeah. to go... Mate, I couldn't believe it. it was the biggest buzz ever, you know. Yeah. So it was like uh, Brownie, like, he was like my big brother, really, yeah. from day one. And as I said, he taught me everything. So I, I remember the night that he rang me after scans and said, I'm never going to play again and <sighs> you can make this jersey your own, da 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 and spoke to me about it. So I, I got my opportunity round one. So Andrew Farrow was the coach, Pops, yeah. and Pops called me in and just said mate i'm going to give you your opportunity you're going to start off the bench yeah and um yeah that was it we played the cronulla sharks the shark Sharky. bark so round a, one a south uh, south coast kind of yeah the battle. derby the big derby dragons yep. and sharks so um, Do you remember i mean because especially those days as well i mean I, I assume anyway um there was no under 20s so you could not re- like in under 20s these days was well, not around anymore but you can kind of feel that first grade system in the sense you walk into that big stadium yeah you've got all your kit laid out for you yeah. whereas i mean in those days you're in the fucking yeah you're not bush doing, that, doing man. nothing you're doing yeah what was that like um, walking in for the first time well yeah it was a it was a buzz it was crazy um yeah look for the debut all i remember i got on with 27 minutes to go and I was lucky enough to score two tries and we Surely won the game. Not. Fucking jam. We scored the main Two meters. I, I reckon I ran about two meters to score both of them. Um, I just sort of barged over from dummy half. So like, um, it's funny. Like, I sort of remember how I scored the tries, but the biggest thing I took out of the game that day was we finished the game. We we're in the dressing room at Shark Park, and Craig Smith, big front rower, who who was our co-captain at the time, and Colin Ward and a few of the old Wayne Bartram, a few of the old senior players. All the media blokes came into the dressing room. They were all around me, all asking me questions. And I remember those boys just pulled me aside like while I was doing the interviews and just said, you haven't done anything yet, mate. Oh, really? I don't, they, they were like, we don't remember you scoring the tries. We don't remember you winning the game for us. You get your ass in the gear, you get in the shower, and you get ready for next week. Fuck. And that was probably one of the biggest things I took out of it was like, whoa. 
Is you know, you've got to get back on. Yeah. You've got to get back. Don't get too carried away with it all. That yep. you, you know, you've got, to, you've got to get back and focus. So. Hey, you know what's crazy about that is on my debut, yeah. I scored, like I think it was like the second best, 75-meter try yeah. and a bit of pub trivia before. I actually ran, in the modern game of rugby league, my debut was the most meters run for a debutante. Really? 277 meters. So nice. It was, it was a solid game. Yeah, like, massive. Um, and so when I walked off, the media manager, like, pulled me aside and he said just so you know mate you're not playing first grade next week really yeah same situation to pull and also oh so you know, what did he know that or he just well wayne's obviously gone to him and, and said, said pull his head in a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then on top of that so yeah. the most ever meters for a debutante in the modern game rugby league <laughs> you know the three two one point system for like yeah. the players like in within the club like men of the match and that yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't even get in the three two really one. <laughs> i was like this is rigged what is doing like but at the time i was just because i was still trying to be humble i didn't i didn't realize that this must have been rigged but i'm like come on man of surely yeah. i got some some boats <laughs> i did good enough to get something yeah like yeah. And, I, and so i didn't get any of the points in the man of the match with internally and i got told i wasn't playing the next week but i ended up playing the next week <laughs> The current players would say this when they say about old players saying, oh, yeah. back in my day <laughs> yeah, and back yeah, in yeah. my day. But <clears throat> times change. Yeah. Like, things change. What, what I suppose, senior players, coaches mm. could do to you back then <laughs> compared to how things are handled these days, it's yeah. chalk and cheese. Oh, There's no doubt about close. that, you know, like... Um, and I feel like it's not that it's a good or a bad thing. No, it's but that's just, just how it was. Yeah, it's yeah. just how it was, you know. Yeah. Mate, I remember getting the shreds torn off me during half time or yeah. certain things. I remember I got sent off one day and Andrew <laughs> Farrow absolutely tore shreds off me. But it wasn't going sook in the corner. It was, yeah. right, well, when I come back, I'm going to show you, yeah. you know, sort, yeah. sort things out and make sure I don't happen again. But I just don't think you can have that same approach these days. Nah, Times have changed, no man. No, absolutely mm. not. And, and as you, I, th- I feel like we we weren't. I mean, we were controlled in the sense of like they had more power over us back in those days. Yeah. Whereas I feel kids are less naive nowadays, so they can't not that they know their rights, but they they they're more knowledgeable about what's mm. going on in a situation because yeah. of you know the internet, more information out no there. No doubt. Yeah. Whereas like when we were coming through, there was a way you did things, <laughs> and if you pull your head in or you don't, yeah, see you later. Yeah, and that's that's just how it was, and and it was the senior players who controlled all that. Yeah. You know, you, you start getting out of line, then they come down on you. You didn't really have to worry about the coaches much. It was the, the senior players in your team. So, yeah, definitely. Um, look, I'm, I've, look, I've been out of it a little while now. You know, I'm not too sure how it all, how it's all working in club land these days. But, yeah. man, it was, it was, I'm sure it's different to what it used to be Mate, when I started. I, man, when I first started, I like most of the – there were some first-grade players that didn't speak to me for like two years. Really? Yeah, like they just didn't speak to me. It's just because like – I was because I played soccer till I was seventeen, yeah. and so I didn't play any footy. So I didn't understand yeah. the culture. I was very quiet. Like I didn't want to disrespect anyone. Yeah. And and yeah, I remember this one time at the Normby, um, and it was like halfway through. You know the Normby up in Brisbane. Yeah, 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 yeah halfway yeah. through. It's like the uh, Northies and yeah. or, or the Coogee Pav. Um, yeah. Halfway through the year of two thousand eight, so I'd already played like quite a bit of NRL. It was the first time that we were talking. Berrigan pulled me aside. He said, "Mate." You might be a bit of a weirdo, but you're a fucking good footy player and I like you and you got my respect. And really? I couldn't believe how long it had taken to fucking get their respect. And I was literally playing first grade already. Um, so that was... Well, man, that was only 10 years ago, mate, 11 years ago and that hell. was happening. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, obviously I brought it on myself in the sense that like I played soccer, so I was very, just so quiet, man. Quiet, like, yeah. I just yeah. didn't want to fucking put a foot wrong and I was intimidated in the sense that I didn't understand... Like, I just didn't get the culture. I didn't mm. get what you had to do or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, if I can... mm. so yeah, you, you make your debut and did you continue staying in the first grade side that year? Yeah, I was I was pretty lucky. I pretty much started or was on the bench every game, played yep. 26 or 27 games. The first year? The first year. That oh, was wow. it. I literally, other than getting dropped for um, off-field <laughs> drama, I don't think I played reserve grade. Can you speak about the off-field drama that you were dropped for? Oh, uh, I was oh, in mate, my gym in years later. Years later. Oh, years later, later, man. Yeah. Not that year. No, yeah. no, no. Um, <laughs> no, I played that whole season. Played it out. Played, made it to the second week of the finals. Um, yeah, and then I was lucky, man. I had really good incentives in my contract. So, you know, I got really well paid in my first year. And then, you know, I think it'd be the case these days, you know, once those all in those incentives add up, then 
you got to at least start on that for the next contract, you yeah. know, so or more. So I signed a new three year deal straight after or halfway through that season, two thousand one, oh, really? man. It was good. So yep. Yeah, it was a really good opportunity, really good season too. And yeah, so for you personally, was it a really good debut season? Yeah, it was great. I was I was very lucky. Um, yeah, as I said, we um, we made it to the second week of the finals. Probably like most kids, when you're that age, you take the finals for granted. Yeah. Like I couldn't hardly even remember the. And you know, we made the second week of the finals, two thousand one, two thousand two. I wouldn't even be able to tell you what happened in any of those games. Really? Like. Just, they just go like yeah, that so quick true. and you take it for granted. You just think, oh, yeah, this happens every year. Yeah, like you know? I'm expected to we'll be We'll get here. a chance. We'll yep. get a chance every year. But yep. um, no, I had a, had a really good year and um, yeah, we just went on from there, I suppose. And so so the next year, um, so how are you used for uh, finishing position-wise as the Dragons? Like, is, you know, like were you top six, top eight? Man, I couldn't even tell you. I don't even know. Oh, really? No, you, I, know, I know we were up there. Threat? Were you a title threat? Um, yeah. What what we really struggled with in those early two thousands was um, injuries, you know, and probably you know more in 02, 03, and four was the fact that we had superstars. Man, we had Barrett, Riles, you know, Luke Bailey up front, Matt wow. Cooper, Mark Gaznia, yeah. Ben Hornby. Uh, you know, we had some really top players Sean Timmons played for Australia but we never really got them all on the park together oh, all okay. playing consistently yep and that probably let us down a little bit but um, as I said I, I'm not too sure where we finished 0 but we made it to the second week of the finals so mm. yeah, it wouldn't have been a bad year I'm sure so the call up to the Australian squad in 2002 was that expected? Surprising? Man, train on squad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, no, nah, surprise because um, uh, just come from nowhere. I think 2002, I must have had a pretty decent season, obviously, yep. if that's happened. Um, yep. Yeah, got called up into that squad. Oh, man, I stuffed that opportunity up big time. <laughs> Bad. Um, I haven't really talked about this, actually. I, I, um, I got named in that train on squad. Yeah. Australian squad and um, we had a training session uh, planned Chris Anderson was the coach but the day before the night before was the footy show review you know when they get yeah, they used to get everyone all the players that weren't involved in the grand finals and finals in and you do fun stuff and <clears throat> yep. everyone would get on the drink so I remember Rosey and Mark Gaznia who were also picked in that squad they were there with me doing the um footy show stuff so we we give ourselves an absolute hammering <laughs> on the drink but people had they the boys had told me they're like oh no don't worry about the australian trainer tomorrow it'll just be you know meet and greet and yeah. a few ball skills and yeah just take sizes and all this for um for for the gear and that <laughs> and mate i give myself an absolute hammering i've turned up and they've done fitness oh mate they've done fitness and they're doing like malcolm's with tackle bags and running around and um <laughs> i was awful i yeah. was dreadful mate i was that bad it wasn't funny mate. i was, I was that bad <laughs> hopper john hopper who was trained as well he come up to me at the end of the session and he said pig he said you're that bad you could train with me anytime <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh no <laughs> so you're just an absolute man mate i was just yeah and the, the biggest thing was i look back at it now Rollsy wasn't doing the running that day. He was in the gym, so he was sweet. Oh. Mate, and Gaz is an absolute fitness freak, yeah. so he just breezed through it. And poor yeah. old pig, mate, I was struggling. <laughs> so to you've last. been stitched, you've been mate. So anyway, that I think. Um, well, it's funny. I bumped into Gordon Tallis the next year, and Gordy, the Brisbane guys, obviously weren't at the training session. And yeah. Gordy actually grabbed me, and he said, "Grab me by my shirt one day at the footy stadium." And he goes, "What did you do at that training session?" I'm like. What do you mean, man? He's like, what did you do? And I said, well, I didn't know it was going to be a fitness <laughs> session. I got on the piss and then they flogged us. And then he said, like, oh, mate, you know that they were going to pick you and put you on the bench. And oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, he did. I still remember it this day. He said, man, I remember. He said, uh, well, Bedsy, Danny Baderas, he, him and Craig Wing, I think, were the two dummy halves. And I think Bedsy might have had an injury or was struggling with something. And... And then, yeah, Gordy told me that and just rattled me. And that was like the start of the next season. I was like, oh, man, I've just absolutely blown it. And I'd, I honestly have never 
I don't think I've ever spoken about it or talked about that to anyone, ah, but it really? spins me away now. I mean, I look back and I think, oh, you idiot. You've just, like you've just ruined piss, it. Though, One like... night on the piss, yeah, after the footy show. And, yeah, it just, just ruined it. It's just... I mean, but you're right though. To rock up and get towed, that's very uncommon. Like, well, yeah, I, mate, I, I'm trying to think. What's the Billy Johnson? Who was I think was oh. the Bulldogs train. I think he was the Australian trainer as well. And for people listening, Billy Johnson is a renowned just nuts. Yeah, r- ruthless. So, mate, look, you know, I got what I deserved. I yeah. shouldn't have. Looking back, I shouldn't have gone out on the piss, and yeah. I shouldn't have, you know, presented myself the next day <laughs> the way I did. But, mate, I missed a massive opportunity. Great but story, anyway, great story. Yeah, <laughs> terrific. <laughs> All so good. the next season rolls around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and are you? Uh, did that motivate you at all though? Like, fuck, I can't be doing that shit again. I'm not. Nah, really. nah. You know what, man? Uh, if I'm being honest, I probably didn't. Eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I. You know, we had 2003. Um, we didn't make the finals of the Dragons, but um, yeah, we, we we had an okay season. But again, I went back to injury. You know, we had a lot of injuries. Yeah. A lot of players on the sideline, our best players. So we never really got going in 2003. It was the it's the first year Nathan Brown, pretty sure the first year Brown he took over as coach. Yeah, man, he was he was only 29 years old. Wow, you know, took over. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. When I look back at it now, man, I, I you know what I, I sort of look at it and I wish, and I, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to Brownie, I wish he was never put in that position because I just I don't care who you are, whether you're Cameron Smith or. Billy Slater or yep. whoever, I don't think you'd ever be ready for that position no at 29. Absolutely not. He was the youngest ever first grade coach. He'd only coached one year in Jersey Flag. And I, I, I say to people now, you know, I would have loved to have been coached by Brownie when he's coaching now, like he's coaching now. You know, he's had so much experience. He's yep. coached at the Dragons, coached overseas. Now he's coaching at Newcastle. I would have loved to have been coached by him now yep. back then, but... I just well, I I still don't think that it was the right thing to do by mm. the club to put him in that position. You yeah. Know? So, but he was the coach that year, and um, now we didn't make the finals. And was this a? I mean, you no, know, this is just reports. But was this the first season that you received like negative media, or did you receive negative media before that? Um, oh, look, I probably would have received a little bit of negative media. My my weight was the most talked about weight in the NRL for ten years, I reckon. Yeah, was it just like what we just like all the time, all the time. Um, which you know, when you're young, you probably don't handle it as well as what we what yeah. you do when you're a little bit older, but. Mate, it was like the most reported on weight in the game. It was ridiculous. They you wouldn't know? do it to this year, like this generation. There's no way they'd get away with that. No, shit, they mate. probably wouldn't. You know, um, the whole fat shaming thing yeah, about yeah. these days. But Were you, but did it frustrate you as a youngster, like in the sense, like, mate, what are you talking about? I've played 24 games. Like I'm playing at you playing yeah. 80 minutes at the time. No, no, no. I never really played 80 minutes. I was but playing it was 50 or 60 minutes. But that's a different time of footy. It was right? a different time. Like, there was obviously a lot more interchanges than that yeah. back then. Most clubs operated with a dual hooker sort yep. of rotation but um you know i was i was certainly playing plenty of football but yep. man I, I look at it back now and i look back on that now and just laugh man because it's crazy because that same season that you received that like negative media about your mm. weight you broke the record for most individual points for the dragons 166 mm. points i don't know yeah. if you knew that did you know that uh i did know that i did have some sort of record <coughs> like that yeah but look you know the the St. George Yellowwara Dragons weren't around for that long, so it yeah, probably yeah. wasn't. I, I, well, I would guarantee that record's gone now, especially with the likes of Widdop and that these days yeah. playing there. But um, yeah, look, uh, look, I thought I, I think I had a good year in '03. <laughs> pretty sure I had an okay year. <laughs> I think so, mate. I honestly, you know, and it, it's not good to say, but I, I don't really remember too yeah. much. You know, yeah. I, um, play so much footy life. Yeah, well, you do. Know, you yeah. do play so much footy and. I just remember we didn't make the finals. Our last game was against the Broncos at Suncorp Stadium. And, mate, that was it. Yeah, that was it really. But I, I was pretty confident that I had a decent year that year. So the next year, um, mm. yeah, another consistent year for you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they started talking about New South Wales, Origin, everything like yeah. that. Yeah, look, uh, look, I'm not I'm not too fussed that I didn't get there, the Origin. And... and I know that may sound funny, but the reason I probably am not is because I had Denny Baderis in front of me, you yeah. know. Um, Bedsy's probably one of the best hookers that's ever played the game, you yeah. know. You know. I put him in the same bracket, you know, up there with Cameron Smith, obviously. You mm. know, Bedsy was probably an era before um, Smithy come along. But, yeah. 
Um, mate, he was the best hooker in the game. He By far. changed the game. He changed the way dummy halves play, Bedsy. Pro- so probably brought it from that having an out and out hooker, bigger, st- stockier bloke to sort of having a half. You know, Bedsy yeah. was a pretty sure Bedsy was a five eight growing up, um, and then was moulded into a dummy half yeah. and was very very skillful. So and he would have been only like maybe. 85 eight to 90 kilos, I'd Bedsy, say. Bedsy, yeah, I'd say he would not, have been not, not something. Big. Like, yeah, I'd say he would have been something like that, around 85, 90 kilo. I'm not too sure. But, mate, he was the best. He was mm. the best of the best. Played for Australia. So when I sort of look back and think, oh, I didn't get to represent New South Wales, I can understand it. Yeah. Man, Bedsy was a better player than me. There's no doubt about that. Um, I didn't get an opportunity. He stayed really healthy throughout his career. So... Man, play How on, just he move stay on. Healthy. Just get injured <laughs> one year, bro. Well, see, the other thing, the, the other thing was when I was sort of playing was that Craig Wing was like the best utility in the game as yeah, well, you know. Yeah. And you know, Wingy could play half, five eight, hooker, center, lock, center, yep. wing, fullback. You could yep. put a, could have put Wingy anywhere. So when yep. you were looking playing two hookers, Wingy fitted the bill perfectly yeah, for a bench true. player, man. So no, I never, I never really got an opportunity there, but. When there's better players in front of you, you just gotta, just gotta move it. on, man. Cop it, yeah. Because yeah. if you get you know beat down, like it's kind of like the um, similar to Scotty Prince, like he did end up playing some Origin, mm. but I mean he's behind like Thurston. What do you do, Lockyer? Like what are you gonna do? <laughs> like, fucking hell! Like what are you? And born, born in the wrong generation, yeah, but the, you know, like, as I said, Bedsy was the best man. And the, the, you know, I always say this: the funny thing about Bedsy is, is that. He's such a good bloke, you couldn't even hate him. <laughs> yeah, you like, you couldn't even have a rival. You know, you see a yeah. rivalry of, you know, like the Mick Ennis, Robbie Farrer or yeah, something like yeah, that, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, and um, you couldn't hate Bedsy because he's just such a good Maybe bloke. Even you know? worse. Mate, we, we both <laughs> played over in England at the same time and we yep. spent we spent both our Christmas days with our families together, you know. Oh, we okay. just, yep. So he's just a champion bloke. So, mate, I've got no problems with that. So that's this is the year that you essentially... Um, yeah, you, mm. you get an offer, apparently salary cap restraints, but I don't know how you know true that is. You know. Yeah, look, uh, um, Brownie had made a decision, I'm pretty sure. Not that he's told me. He probably can tell me now. It doesn't really matter. But yeah. he'd, um, he'd signed Michael Ennis. Okay. Michael Ennis only played one year at the Dragons, I think, over five. But he'd signed a really young Michael Ennis. They said salary cap dramas, whether that was true or not. I'm not too sure. But we did have some guns, so yeah. I could understand that. Um, but if something happens, they always seem to find. Yeah, there's always something. Yeah, oh, we got a bit know, of money yeah. there for you. <laughs> well, uh, going with that, I had a meeting one day at the Dragons, and I actually offered the Dragons when it right come right down to the crunch. I actually offered the Dragons to stay on the same money I was on. So it was on the third year of my deal that I had at the yep. end of 2004, and this would have been in April or May. And I said at the end, like I was obviously asking for a lot more money. Mm. And then when it came right back to it, and they were saying they sell, they had salary cap dramas. I actually said to them, "You know what? I want to stay. I'll stay on the same money I'm on now." And they still said no. So that's when I thought, "Oh, maybe it's not salary yeah, cap dramas, no, man." But yeah. um, mate, I, I was happy with my decision. I had a few offers. I had offers to go to South Cronulla, uh, Parramatta, and maybe one or two others. But um, mate, I made a decision to go to Parramatta. So. Yeah. Um, they offered me really, really good money, which you know I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that I was needing to set myself up. So yep. when I realised that I definitely couldn't stay at St George, I, I had to take the offer at Parramatta. So yep. I went over to the Eels. And so at this point, because I, I know obviously your goal kicking was something that you know mm. was part of your like cult like following. Yeah, had you built that? Kind of, or was it at the Eels where you really built that? No, nah, it was at St George. I didn't really get much of an opportunity at Parramatta to goal kick because yep, okay. uh, we had Luke Burt, who was a, mate, a superstar goal kicker, Bertie. So yep. I only kicked part time a little bit there when needed. It was at the Dragons because when I came into the first grade in 2001, I shared the hooking role with Wayne Bartram and he was a goal kicker as well. So it actually worked out well that we both sort of goal kicked. Oh, so, yep. mate, I goal kicked 2001, 2002, 2003. Excuse me, a bit in 2004. But Matty Head came on the scene as well then in 2004, I'm pretty sure, and he was goal kicking. So my goal kicking career sort of faded after I left the draft. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that something that you enjoyed, I guess, the whole... I loved it, man. Yeah. loved it. Yeah, it did it. it. Mate, it was all by you know, accident how it all panned out. Um Maxi Ninnis, again, the skills coach at the Dragons, um, he thought I relied on hooking the ball through the post too much mm. 
when I goal kicked and he wanted me kicking it straight. Yeah. So he told me to put my left arm in the air yeah. to counterbalance the ball. <laughs> the ball from hooking through the post. This is yeah. fair income. Like yeah. I look back now as a what am I? I'm thirty eight, I'm thinking, mate, that bastard's got me a beauty because I reckon I reckon Maxie was in the pub years later laughing, going, Have a look what I've got this wanker doing on <laughs> when he kicks for goal. He stitched me up deluxe, I reckon. But mate, you know what? I it was fun. It got the crowd involved. Yeah. Um, it was my sort of iconic move when yeah. I kicked goals. So, you know, I look back now and think that it was great. You oh, know? I loved it. Was it was good fun. You know, it's funny. Is like, they've made that. I mean, I, you'd know way more than me. But there may be a element of taking the piss. But he might have been so switched on with footy that that ritual for yeah. you may have helped. You know, that just yeah, that of course. Of getting yeah. your head in that. Okay, my hand's up. My head's Mate, one up. thing I'll say about Maxi, he was way before everyone else in rugby league. Like, I remember in 01 when I first got there, he was already filming video sessions, cut and tape. Oh, and this is video, not yeah. like the easy way they can do it now on computers and everything like that. He'd have his handheld camera out there filming me goal kick, filming my training sessions, yep. then have me back in, like, analysing and going over everything. So... Um, yeah, I don't know, but it, it was it was good fun while it lasted. The crowd loved it. As no, I, I loved it. I, I loved watching it. It was just yeah, it was just one of those things that, as you said, it just brings that extra element to footy. It's of that. fun, man. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I, you know, I always tried to not portray, but it's just me. I loved having fun. I want yeah. to enjoy it while I'm out there. I want to I want to enjoy the crowd. I want to enjoy being with the boys and playing footy and winning and. You know, celebrating after it. That's that's the best part about it. Do the boys give it to you? Like, yeah, of course. They <laughs> copped the hammering off them, man. The boys used to do it at training and G up and oh, mate, all the time. But well, how good is it? Because yeah. everyone's having a laugh, yeah, you know. That, yeah. That's why I loved it. Everyone yeah. had a laugh. I don't care people taking the piss out of me. <laughs> I've had people take the piss out of me my whole life and rats ass. Like, I don't care. <laughs> but, uh, mate, the, we, had, we had a lot of fun with it, man. What's your most memorable conversion maybe to win or, or something like that where you're like, maybe you realise, oh, fuck, look at that. I mean, maybe, the, you know, the crowd was doing yeah. that. Most, most people now that I've finished talk about the Broncos conversion. So... It was, it was back in 2003 when we didn't make the finals, but the Broncos were on a real bad losing streak and I think they needed to win for the finals. Anyway, we had all our team out. Had um, Barrett, Gaznia, Lance Thompson, Riles, Cooper, the, the, the Deluxe, all out. You know, We had a pretty much reserve-grade team mm. in. It was our last game of the year. Sean Timmons was our captain and we literally, before the game, were just mucking around. It was like a real rat's ass sort of warm up for the game and everything and then we were just like boys let's just go out and have fun so we went out there mate no one gave us a hope in hell to win the game anyway got down to the last 10 minutes and um Lockie kicked the field goal with about five minutes to go to put him up 25 24 yep and then anyway play went on and with about two minutes to go we got a penalty on the 40 meter line 10 in, 10 in from touch. Yep. So we were obviously 40 metres out from the goal line, 10 in from touch. Man, I I don't know what come over me. I remember jogging to the sideline because I was hooker. Yep. Got the ball and I looked at the sideline and all our bench were pointing at the posts. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they're like, take the two, take the two. And I was like, I just like freaked out. And Are like, there's serious? actually a YouTube yeah. clip of it yeah. on there. And I've looked at it and you see me just sort of freak out and go, take the two, sir, take the two. <laughs> and I didn't even ask the captain. I didn't ask Timo yeah. or Benny Hornby. And then I think Benny Hornby was the skipper because Timo was on the field. And then Benny goes, yeah, yeah, yeah take the two. So, mate, anyway, I, I lined it up and 40, I think it ended up 41 out, 10 in from touch. Fuck. Nailed it. Yep. And, um, yeah, we won the game on the bell. So no, everyone right. always asks me about that one. That's probably no, one of the how good is that? There. Like 40 out, 10 in. You're not yeah. taking two usually there. That's no, a, no way. That, that was like, obviously, that was the biggest sort of yeah. longest out, you know. Yeah. Da 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 da. For the closest to the sideline that I'd ever taken. But just nailed it. Just tucked it in the left upright. Yeah, Suncorp, too. Suncorp. Mate. Was, mate, there was 40, 50,000 there. How good is that? It was. Um, it was great because, you know, the Dragons have got a good following up in yep. Brisbane as well. So. Yeah, especially those days, more people come out to the game. Yeah, of course. Yep. Um, you know, it was just normal for Broncos to get 40,000, 50,000 yep. on a Friday night. So, man, yeah, that was probably one of the most memorable for sure. And then so you go to the Eels and, and mm. was what was the, 
I guess the headspace going to the Eels was that, you know, you're an established first grader, you know, you made the Australian train on squad, mm-hmm. you were talked about for New South Wales. Was it um, not pressure, but, you know, you're a, you're a key signing. You yeah, know? yeah, and I did know that because they, they were going through a bit of a rebuilding stage. They had that great year in 01. I think they, they went okay in 02 and then 03, 04, they struggled, yep. Parramatta. And in 05, when I signed, they signed Glenn Morrison, I think, from the Cowboys, Paul Stringer mm-hmm. from the Bunnies, Tamana Tahu from Newcastle, Tahu. Um, and two or three other quality first graders. So it was almost like a, a rebuilding and a new start for Parramatta. So we knew we had a bit of pressure on us to, to perform mm-hmm. and um, and have a good year. So, mate, we, we, we did enjoy it. Yeah, no Minor premiers that year? Yeah, minor premiers. We I remember we played uh, the Broncos on a Friday night at Paris Stadium, and we secured the minor premiership yep. jointly with the Dragons, which oh, was funny right. because right. you know obviously I'd come yep. from the Dragons, but we won it because we had a superior for and against. So I always g the boys up. <laughs> You're <laughs> goalkeeping, bro. Had to be, <laughs> Not sure about that. But, um, yeah, man, we we won the minor premiership and then shit ourselves in the finals. Yeah. Lost the Cowboys. Yeah, man. Um, Mate, looking back now, we just handled well. Not well. I think the coaching staff handled it pretty poorly. Mm. Uh, going back on that Broncos game, I, I remember around twenty six, we beat the Broncos. We played brilliant uh, footy and, and won well. And the trainer, who's a good mate of mine, the head trainer, ran out, and I went to give him a hug and high five, and he brushed me, and he was like. No, 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 no. Smithy saying, settle down, settle down. He doesn't want you to enjoy it. Settle down. Don't show any emotion. You haven't won anything. Da 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 da. What? And at the time, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, like yeah. whatever. And, but then, you know, I almost think that that was the start of, yeah, you know, maybe not enjoying what we what we'd achieved. You got to ride that way. Yeah, of I course. Think. Yeah, I look back now and I think, man, we should have been enjoying that. That yeah. was the best. Minor premiers. I know it doesn't mean much, but. Yeah, we'd had a really good year. We finished first. We got to play Manly in the first week of the finals. Mm. We smoked them by about four, 30 or 40 points. Yep. And then we got the week off. Ah, oh, that momentum. So we hadn't had a hard game since, you know, probably the Broncos in round 26. Played Manly. We beat them easy. Had the week off. Then we took on the Cowboys, man, and it was... Matty Bowen Thurston show. It was, yeah. Brett Furman, who's Furman has a good mate of mine. Uh, they just tore us to pieces, twenty nine nil. I'm pretty sure. Oh wow! Yeah, so you're just really unprepared, I guess. Well, man, it was the year. It was the '05 year. You know, the Tigers went on. They were brilliant, and uh, they won the competition. But that year, uh, you know, I'm sure people will remember Dragons and Para were the two teams everyone was talking yep. about. You're going to be in the grand final. Going to yep. be cracker. Neither of us made it. You know, yeah. the, the Dragons went out the night before to the Tigers, and then we went out the next day to the Cowboys, twenty nine nil. And that's when the Tigers were just hitting their front, no wrestle. Yeah, just, yeah, they were playing. But you know what? And and you know maybe this was to our detriment when the Tigers won on the Saturday night. We thought we got this oh, because, because we'd we beat, beat them. We'd beaten them twice that year already. Yep. We knew how to beat them, but we'd obviously got ahead of ourselves, <sighs> mate. Honestly, we all shit ourselves. Yeah, we all shit ourselves. It was at the ANZ Stadium. Cowboys just come out and just blitzed us. They were far too good for us, man. Yeah, and, wow. Mate, the end that. of the season. Yeah. And that was kind of the start of Thurston's, not career, because he's at the nah. Bulldogs and everything, but, but he started to be Well, the ownership about. of the Cowboys yeah. too, you know. Like, it was his team then. Yep. He was, um, well, Brett Furman. Furman was playing seven, I'm pretty sure, and Thurston was six. Mm. Um, but that was the start of JT's, yep. obviously, yeah, with the Cows. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, man, man it hurt. That's, you're just like, you know, the, all the what ifs kind of thing, you know? Yeah, oh, 100%. You know, you, you'd love to love to go back and change it. But, man, we just, we didn't, as a team, we didn't turn up, you know, and the Cowboys certainly deserved the grand final appearance. Yeah, and I guess, you know, when you're looking at rugby league as a whole, for them to make the grand final, you know, yeah. relatively new to yeah. the competition, that, that's they've built everything they have now from that grand mm. final, you know, in the fact that you look at the Titans, they're still kind of struggling. Yeah to get that fan base or whatever, whereas Cowboys, you know, that, that really put them on the map. Oh, yeah, no doubt. They, there's no doubt about that. You know, they, they obviously would have been disappointed not to win um, back then, but, um, you know, just to be able to get to that position, as you say, relatively mm. young club. Um, but they, they were they were a good footy team. So as a Queenslander, thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs>
<laughs> but it still kills me. Eh? It's funny. I uh, I remember we went out. And, you know, obviously I was about a three or four day bender <laughs> yes, afterwards, and um, I come back and uh, my mum had bought me a CD, and it was a song by I don't even know who sings, and it was it was about having a bad day. Oh. And I was like, Mum, making it even worse. Make it even worse <laughs> yeah. and rubbing it in. You've bought this CD for me, but <laughs> whenever I hear that song now, you've had a bad day. I think, oh, oh fuck that fucking old fight. <laughs> 2005 preliminary she's, final. She's burnt it in your head. Massively, man, man massively. So burnt it in uh, your head. Yeah, it's that that one still hurts because I, you know, we. We put ourselves in a position to win the comp and we just shit ourselves mm. at the end of the day. So the next year, um, I guess, you know, what was it What was it like? Was that, was that disappointment, did it hang as a cloud or did it fire the boys up? No, nah, man, it, it's, we really struggled the start of 2006. Brian Smith took us through the first sort of half of the season um, and then he quit as coach. Um, what, just quit? Yeah, he just said he couldn't do anything with the team and quit. What? Yeah. Wow. Well, I think that was his reason, that he just had enough. Um, and what? Mate, I had a few off-field dramas, got on the piss and got in trouble and got so, stood down and yep. got fined. And Was that just getting on the piss and turn up late or something? Well, mate, well, you wouldn't believe it. The same day that me and a couple of the boys decided to get on the piss and go to the pub instead of recovery is the same day that he announces that he's leaving oh. the club. And it was just pure coincidence. Yeah, so, yeah. but it looks like this. But it looked like, yeah, it looked like it, and it had nothing to do with it. And, um, man, yeah, we we got Budgie, we got JT, Jason Taylor, mm-hmm. come in, and he was our assistant at the time. But he actually turned things around. He, uh, we won eight or nine of our last games and put ourselves in the finals. Because you got the squad, like, yeah, really. we had a, we had a good team again, no doubt about that. But we just hadn't capitalised or won many footy games early in the year but we went on a run um, I think we finished 8th so squeeze right in yeah we played Melbourne who were first yep. down in Melbourne at Amy Park and they beat us 10-4 oh, Mate, yeah. and I yeah it was oh, like storm of the storm this is know. when the wrestle just come in yeah oh, what was that 06 yeah, uh, yeah the old wrestle was already in then mate I used to come off the field against the storm and my neck was killing me <laughs> Wayne, Wayne used to tell us if yeah. they gravel tuck you out, I don't care if you get up and swing. <laughs> like they, he, because he, because he, we were yeah. so sick yeah, of, of them grappling yeah. us and nothing being done about it that he mm. was just like, we need to deter them somehow, stop it or bring it to the attention. Yeah, you know? bring it to the attention. So mm. I mean, obviously, I'm not getting up and swing. <laughs> <laughs> One of the bigger boys can get up and swing. I'll stand behind them aggressively. Yeah, yeah just stay behind them aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he actually told us really? like, just get oh, up yeah. and swing, and I'm okay with that. Getting yeah. the penalty. We we had some we had some good battles with the Storm because the next year in '07 we ended up meeting them in the preliminary final. They beat us that time, and you know history tells us all about the salary cap, mm. you know dramas and that that they had. But, um, mate, we had some really good battles, but the wrestle was just ridiculous back then. It was like you would be getting choked in the tackle. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember the preliminary final, and you know, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but our skipper, Nathan Kalis, had his shoulder popped out because of a, one of the tackles, and it was one of the tackles where they sort of wrapped the ball up with one side, and then as he's going to the ground on his front, they just continue to put pressure on the shoulder joint yep. and just pop his, yep. popped his shoulder out, man. So I know all the boys were dirty about that. You know, once Melbourne brought that in with their Melbourne's wrestle coach, then everyone, yeah. you know, we flew Johnny Donahue, who's still the Melbourne Storm wrestle coach. I remember Parramatta flying him up, you mm. know, and we had him for sessions. And then he trained as guy in Sydney that become our yep. wrestling coach. And then, you know, Larry, who's was our wrestling coach, continues to be the Roosters wrestling coach yeah. to this day. So. Yeah. Man, everyone's got it and it's part and parcel of the game. Yeah, well, same with us. 2007, we've got a guy called, he was a K1 fighter, Hazy. Yeah. And he come over and, and he and we just, because it was just, we had to. Like yeah. nothing was happening. Otherwise, you get left behind. 100%. Yeah. And that's when the, the Tigers struggled because the play the ball speed slowed yeah. dramatically down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, just to, to, to go back a bit, was there any rumblings of Brian Smith going to leave? It was just like nah, man. When yeah, it was just all of a sudden. Yeah, mid 06, just literally. Well, well, as I said, I was on the piss at the pub, <laughs> and I was sending t- like because we were struggling. Eh? we were struggling, and we had a good team. And 
I'm like, nah, we've got to go old school. We're getting on the drink. Oh, really? So it was for that so reason? It was like a Monday, okay. you know, and I got there at about 11 o'clock with a few of the boys. Yep. And I send the text out. I'm like, boys, everyone at the pub, come on, we need yep. to sort this shit out. Let's, you know, get on the drink and sort it out so we can, you know, the old school way. But, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you can't do that anymore. Well, yep. I don't think you can. But, um, yeah, so I got into trouble for that. But he, that afternoon, man, he announced that, that he was going, so... Fucking hell! You know, I'm sure Smithy had his reasons, and I'm sure there's there's always more. Yeah, of course. I, I, I assume anyway. I mean, maybe not. We don't, we don't know. But mate, it, yeah, he left that day, and JT took over. Yeah, Jason Taylor. So that year, you um you make the finals, but you you out you the know, back door, yeah, week one, pretty quick. Yeah. But it was against the Storm who made the finals, lost yeah. to the Broncos. Yeah, um, yeah. And so, you know, I guess that's what 2006. Yep. Um. Yeah, what what's the feeling going into two thousand and you know seven eight? Yeah, seven and eight. That were my last two years at Parramatta. It was they were good. Oh seven was really good. Um, the club made a decision not to sign JC Jason Taylor, even though he did really well. They signed Michael Hagen. Yep. From Newey, uh, Hags mate, Hags was tremendous. Totally different sort of coach to what Smithy was, and probably what a couple of other my coaches was. Yep. Hags is a really good man manager. Okay. Um, and just really. Well, I feel he just really got the boys on board, you know, and, and ha- all ha- had them all rowing in the same direction. Um, and he allowed uh, he allowed our footy team to, to play footy, really. Yeah. And, um, mate, we had a good team. We signed Finchie. I can hope he had a good team. Yeah, Brett Finch came yeah. on board. Tim Smith back then was killing it. Mm. Um, and, you know, we obviously had all the stars. Tahu, Kalis, Hindmarsh, Morrison, I think was still there. Fuck Hindmarsh. Oh, Guru on the wing, Oh, man. fuck, he was like, destructive. Guru. Birdie. People don't remember how destructive oh, he was. Mate, he was, he was like the semi rod driver of our generation. Oh, yeah, yeah. And people don't know that because he's nah. so, I don't know, the media wasn't as big back then, I guess. Or Yeah, probably not the same amount of exposure you yeah, get these yeah. days to what it was. My guru was a freak. Yep. <laughs> probably one of the worst trainers, but he was a <laughs> freak, man. But, mate, me and Guru are close and, mate, we used to travel to training together. No, and he's that. a great bloke. We're, we're, mate, champion bloke. Yep. Tremendous footballer. Tremendous. Oh, honestly, man. I reckon if you could put like Lockie's discipline in the training part oh, yeah. into growth, he would have been one of the all time great wingers. Mate, I well, don't care what well, anyone says. Oh, no doubt about that, man. He was he was a freak. Like the, what he could do when he wanted to do yeah, it. Yeah, when he felt like it. Yeah, mm. um, mate. There was none better than the guru. But mate, champion bloke. <laughs> Quality, like funny bloke oh, to be around. Fun. So funny, man. I only I only spoke to him a few weeks ago, and um, but you're just nonstop laughing. Yeah, so. no, he, he's one of those guys. He's similar to Bo Ryan in the sense of like, you could say the same thing that he says, but his delivery <laughs> is just so much. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. The way he delivers it yeah. is just so much better. Yeah, man. So we we had a good team. We had a, su- a successful season. Um, and yeah, you know, we I, I don't know what we. I think we finished in the top four. Ended up playing the Storm in the preliminary final. They beat us 24-something, 24-18. Or, <laughs> we look back on it now and they had Israel Folau on the bench. Mick Crocker was on the bench and you're like, oh, all right, I yeah. understand. G.I. is just a freaking <laughs> freak. Yeah. Oh, Smithy and all them were there. You know, yeah, Smithy, yeah. Slater, Cronk, I think they were all there. Yep. Mate, but we weren't good enough 07. I think they Melbourne won the combo 07, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They beat yep. Manly and, and then, then Manly, Manly beat, beat them, them in 08. Yeah, yep. so... No, that was a relatively good year. Disappointing we couldn't make the grand final. But um a pretty successful year. Oh eight was a was a blowout really. We really struggled. I'm not sure what really happened in oh eight. It's my last year at Para. Um and you know, I since I went to Para we minor premiers in oh five, made the preliminary final, oh six we've made the finals, oh seven we made the preliminary final, so we're used to making the finals, you know, yeah. at Parramatta. Every year, and I don't know for, for whatever reason, we really struggled and just couldn't put it together, and just yep. didn't make the finals that year. Yep, that's um, that's the first year I played Parramatta actually. Um, Is that when you scored the winning try against us <laughs> on the bell? <laughs> yeah, mate, it made my career honestly. <laughs> fucking hell, that's all I did. Fucking that mate, I'm still getting the guru, mate. Turn and chase. Get on your bike. <laughs> Last play of the game. <laughs> Lockie you know kicks. It was Lockie, wasn't it? Lockie yeah. kicked for the corner for you. Well, yeah. So I'd already scored three tries, mm. and it was on the buzzer. Mate, you think Guru would have learned his lesson? Well, you know what? No, no, no. Don't stick <laughs> okay, up okay. for him. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck him. Terrible wing play. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> but um, 
like like if you looked at it technically, like maybe he could have been a meter back or forward, but yeah, the no, kick from Lockyer was, was fucking accurate, so man. perfect, like, right then, on the bell. And he had the negative of like I'm a small winger, mm. so I'm going to be quick off the mark. Whereas yeah. if I was any bigger. Yeah, I don't make it to the corner. Make it there, I know, I know. So it's just like he got the fucking cauldron of bad things. Yeah. Like if I'm <laughs> if I'm out like the other winger, yeah. I'm not making it. So nah, nah. he fucking got I the know, cauldron yeah. of bad things. Poor old <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, 2008. So at what point did you start speaking to Wigan to go to Wigan? Yeah, uh, probably I think March, April. So pretty early on. Um, I'd always wanted to go over there and play. So I got sort of thing. I had another year to go on my deal, actually. I had um, another year till the end of 2009 to go on the Parramatta contract, but I think I just needed a change, mm. wanted a change. So my partner and I, um, we decided, yeah, to go to go to England and there was a good opportunity with Wigan. And excuse me, I always remember, you know, a few of the older blokes always telling me if you're going to go to... Um, if you're gonna to go to England, try and make sure you go to one of the big clubs. Yeah, make sure so, it's like done legit. Yeah, so um, Wigan came knocking, and I got an opportunity there. So um, you know, it was a bit of a buzz to sign with someone like Wigan in the Super League because Wigan were like the. Yeah, I suppose if if people over here don't know rugby league in the UK, that everyone knows Wigan though. They all know the Wigan Warriors. Um, yeah, and how strong they are. Well, so I only know like pretty much Wigan Leeds. Yeah. Well, Wigan, Leeds, and St Helens are probably the three biggest you know, that, that everyone knows. So, um, yeah, signed a three-year deal to go over there and, and play in the UK Super League. And then, w- what was that like for you personally? Was were you in the mental state of like I'm winding things down here, or were you just like I'm I'm still? A well, I was. Player? I'm just trying to remember. I was 27 when I would have signed there in 08. So, yeah, um, yeah I wouldn't say winding down, but I probably thought that it was a good time if I was going to go over there to have a crack at yep. it. And get a good deal. Get a good contract. It. Yeah, like they had the image rights and the tax-free all going there. So, <laughs> tax-free, how fucking good is mate, that? Yeah, there was, some, there was some good money to be made over there. And um, yeah, we just I just decided it was the right time, you know. Yep. Um, so we went over there and, and got things going. It's um, the Super League because back then now you can only have like two import players or something like that or, or some X amount of import yeah, players. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. Back yeah. then it was a bit of a wild west though, wasn't it? Um, In the sense that yeah, like, they I'm could not recruit. sure. I think there was still a cap on the imports you could have. I think it might have been five or six. Mm. Um, yeah, we had Paddy Richards, Amos Roberts, Tim Smith, Amos Roberts, far out. Thomas Lulawai, oh, Feka Paliasina, so a couple yeah. of Kiwi boys. Yep. Um, so we probably had half a dozen, you know, yeah. like uh, imports, they would call them. But, um, mate, I'll, 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 at the time, I spent two years over there. At the time when I was over there, it was tough. There's no doubt about that, mm. being away from everyone yeah. and the weather and that. Weather and that yeah. But looking back on my career now, I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad I spent that time over there, made lifelong friends. We won the comp over there, um, won the premiership in 2010. So... Um, Mate, it, it was a great time and a really good experience to and, sort of get over there. And so you, you won the um, the Warriors side that won the league leaders? Yeah, we won the league leaders, which is the minor premiership. Okay. Yeah, in 2010. That and was, the grand final as well? And then capped it off with the grand final win, yeah. What was that like? Man, it was crazy, eh? Hey? Um, 80, 90,000 at Old Trafford, which is wow. obviously Man United's home ground. Fucking hell. We played uh, St. Helens, which is, you know, it's like a... You know, like a Broncos Cowboys rivalry or yep. a Dragon Sharks rivalry or a Rooster South rivalry. Yeah. It's massive over there. So we, we played St. Helens in the grand final. Uh, as I said, Michael Maguire. So it was his first year ever as a head coach. He came oh, to really? Wigan in two thousand and ten, yeah. Fucking hell. Um and <laughs> mate, he was he was phenomenal. Really, really strict. Um, but ripped in, trained everyone really, really hard and Mate, we got the results at the at the back end of the year, you know, won that's, the comp. That sign goes, what was a light life? <laughs> Man, it was crazy, eh? Like, it, you know, I, was, I wasn't lucky enough to win one in the NRL, but I, I'm not sure the feeling would be any different because you've worked just as yeah, hard yeah, and definitely. everything like and that. it's in but, front of 90,000 people, you know. Yeah, like, 90,000 at, at Man United's home ground. It was crazy, hey? The, the siren went. We, we started really well in the game and got away to a lead and they never really recovered and we won yep. 24-12 or something like that. But you're always worried. Like, you're always like, one try, one Yeah, Yeah, try. of course. You know, I, I started off the bench that game um, 
and I came on, obviously played like the middle third to half time and then the first 20 odd minutes. So then the last 18 minutes I sat on the bench mm. watching, waiting. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, you can understand yeah. those thoughts, you know, yeah. one try or whatever. Oh, but man. we did really well, man. We, we, honestly, we had a really good team. Uh, the siren sounded and, man, it was just on, on for young and old. <laughs> Saturday, well, it's a Saturday afternoon slash sort of night grand final. You know, you run on the field, do all that, you know, jump around, hoop, yep. hooting and hollering with all the boys and the teammates and, mate, then it was just game on, party time. So, mate, it was pretty bit of a buzz. You know, we had a heap of the Man United soccer boys there. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, that, that? that follow. I think Ryan Giggs was a bit of a, bit of a keen follower. Rooney came down onto the field after the grand final. Oh, wait, yeah, Rooney? he was blind. Oh, really? He was absolutely hammered. Rooney came down. Is he still playing soccer? Mate, I think he's in America playing. Yeah, in yeah. So he's been around for yeah, a Yeah, yeah. But Wayne Rooney, he was that was when he was at you know Man United or whatever. And um, mate, he came down on the field and saw us all after the game yeah. and uh, had a few beers and that. So mate, it was good. It was really good. And so you came back to the uh, 2010. You come back to the Roosters. Yeah, well, I pretty much retired. Um, I had another, again, I had another year to go on my Wigan deal, but my mum got breast cancer mm. and um, we, we were, my wife Carly was pregnant with our first child, so we just made a decision to sort of come home. Yep. Uh, my mum's all good now, everything's fine. Oh, but you. at that point in time, we just thought it would be best if we come home and stay yeah. home. So I left with a year to go on my deal. When we won the comp, I just thought that was it. I've had enough. Yeah, um, yeah. good way to be, go out. What a nice way to go out. I know it's in the UK, not in the NRL, but... Uh, it was a nice way to go out. Came back and probably, I don't know whether I got itchy feet, but my manager started sort of talking to a few clubs. Um, I was pretty much all set to sign with the West Tigers, actually, and play understudy to Robbie Farrar, mm. which I was more than happy with. Um, and then one of the Roosters players uh, did his knee in pre-season training one of the first few weeks. It was a hooker. Yep. Anthony Watts, Wattsy. Oh, so okay, Wattsy yeah. did his knee and... Um, and then Minicello and Braith and Rosey rang me and Smithy, Brian Smith was the coach of the Roosters <laughs> then. So, mate, I went and had a couple of meetings with them. It was all sort of done within a couple of days. I was literally just about to agree to the Tigers. A couple of phone calls from the boys and obviously I'm close with Jason Riles and, mm. and Minnie especially. So they convinced me to come over there, make shit money, yeah, minimum contract, you know, play. And see how I go, but mate, I lasted ten games. I think I lasted ten <laughs> games. And, nah. and man, ten, I, ten games in reserve, or first, first, first grade? ten first, ten or twelve first grade games. I reckon for the last half a dozen of them, I was playing, and I was like, man, I don't even want to be out here. Yeah. Um, and I always remember my last game. We played Melbourne in Melbourne, and I was rooming with Chase Blair, and Chase oh, was only young as yeah, you know, yeah. a young kid. And I remember before the game, I was laying there and. Chase was next to me and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I'm stopping this bloke from making his debut. Oh, really? Yeah, you know, I was like, you're 30, or what was I? I think I was 30 at the time. You're 30. If you don't like it, don't do it anymore, you know? Yeah. This bloke's waiting to achieve his dream and he's the 18th man. And Wow. So I ran, I ran out that night and played against Melbourne, man. And I can literally tell you the whole game I was running around like tackling blokes and instead of thinking about where i got to be or what i got to do, I was like, what am I doing? Really? I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I, why am I running? Why Why am I tackling this bloke? <laughs> this giant. is shit. Yeah, like, I yeah. don't want to do this. So, man, I had a meeting with Smithy and the staff and that was it. They sort of said, you know, we've got to um, do something. And I said, I'm done. I'm done. I, I don't want to play anymore. Oh, as in, as in they got to do something as in where they like, look, you can see that your head's not in it? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we weren't playing well. We weren't winning football games and every player had to have a meeting sort of thing yep. to sort of analyse where they were at. And then I just come out and said, Smithy, I don't want to do it anymore, man. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I said, I've been ringing my manager for a month telling him I don't want to play anymore. Oh, wow. Um, so, man, that was it. Yeah, literally done and dusted and finished. That's crazy. You're sitting there looking across and there's this young guy. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, you know, I'm... I don't want to be here and you're desperate. I, I remember what it feels like to be yeah, here. Yeah, I did. I did. Like, and, you know, yeah, you know what it's like. Yeah. It's it's a dream. Like, Well, my 18th man was a little bit different. We spoke about it off camera. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there, though. <laughs> we will not go there. But, man, no. that's what I was thinking, eh? I was just like, man, this guy's that close, you know, that close yeah. to achieving his dream of 
And what am I doing? I've done it for 10 or 12 years. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, yeah. I don't need to do this anymore. So. And like, what, what else are you really trying to prove? Like, like in a sense of... Well, if your heart's prove, not in it, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Why, why do it, you yeah. know? And it's probably one of the, you know, going, sorry, sorry, probably going back a little bit about my job now with radio and being on the field and interviewing players. One of the biggest buzzes I get now is seeing the reactions of kids that make their debut yeah, and yeah. play well, you know, like... I, like, you know, a Victor Radley. I got to interview Victor Radley after the grand final. Uh, he's, I'm he's thinking form, 20 he's... years old, yep. a gun, yep. rips in, yep. and Loves he's like it. loving it, man. Yeah. And he's just won a comp. And I'm like, that that's the joy that I get out of it, seeing yep. the, the young kids make their debut, achieve their dream of playing in the NRL, so and just true. the buzz that they get. Because, you know, I know what it was like when I did it. Yep. And how much of a big deal it is for, you know, the kids that come in and play today. And you know how much... It's like a blur when you're that age too. Yeah. Like you're just so fucking like, yeah. what is happening? Well, like, you're in the bubble, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. In, you get you get in this cocoon, this bubble, and yeah. then it just, everything just goes so quick when you're young. And so true. Um, you probably don't enjoy it or sit back and enjoy it as much as, as you probably what you should. Yeah. But then you don't want to enjoy it too much because you might get no, and you might get into trouble like <laughs> yeah. I did on a few occasions. <laughs> Um, okay, so I ask all the, the boys. I'm sorry, don't ask all the boys this. This is a, a new little segment. Yeah, man. Um, see how you go. So what I, I'm going to say a player's name, and you just got to say one, the first word or one of the words that comes to your head. <laughs> um, you know, we'll see how we go. This is the first yeah, time I've done it. Yeah. Um, Sweet. Jason Tamalolo. Freak, mate. Freak. freak yeah. Well, I, I'm glad I don't tackle him, mate. How do you tackle him? Mate, you, know, I don't you go know. around the legs, you get a busted shoulder. Mate, I'll wait till someone else tackles him. <laughs> yeah, after. jump on the top. <laughs> Billy Slater. Best fullback I've seen. Better than Lockie? Better, best fullback I've seen. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Um, James Tedesco. Exciting. Yeah, he is exciting. Exciting, man. Paul Gallant. Workhorse. Sam Burgess. Gun. Would have loved to have played a game with him, Sammy. Yeah, oh, yeah. And how good that be? He's just on the back of like him. one of them blokes you'd love. Played against him, but yeah. would have loved to have played. Made a quick story on Sammy Burgess. I remember 2009, I think it was 2009, Beaver, Steve Menzies. I caught up with him. He was playing for Bradford. Yep. And I remember him telling me, he said, wait till you see this kid play. And it was Sammy Burgess. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. And playing just... for Bradford. Pretty sure Bradford, yeah. So Sammy Burgess was playing for, Br- yeah, for Bradford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before he came over and, to Australia. And Steve Menzies, one and of the Beaver, best. Beaver, yeah. He said, mate, you wait. He said he'll be the best forward in the game. Really? Yeah, I still remember it. Yeah. Oh, how was, great. And then he literally young, goes on to fulfill young that. Young Sammy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was he a little maniac like he is now? Mate, he wasn't little. He was <laughs> yeah, big, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big man. Um, yeah. Darren Lockyer. Very talented, mate. Andrew Johns. The best. The best ever? The best. Freddie Filler. My idol. Oh, really? Yeah, mate. Yeah, as a kid, man. Mate, are you still my idol? I love oh, that bloke. Mate, I love him. I love Freddie. I look, I've had a little bit little bit to do with Freddie over the years and I see him a fair bit now obviously with um with his channel nine commitments, mate. He's an absolute champion, Freddie. Mate, he and his interviews are so good. Yeah. Like you get you get a taste of that banter. Something different, But eh? he, he delivers it in a in a, a rascal way. No one can get angry with Freddie. Oh, please, no <laughs> way. Um Kalen Ponga. Uh, uh, very good man. Yeah. Exciting. Look looking forward to seeing what he can do with his career. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Give, you know, barring, you know, injuries and yeah. all that kind of stuff. He could be one of the best ever, man. Oh, man. It just when the first when I saw him debut, like a lot of people were like, Oh, you don't know, you don't know. But sometimes you can just see a player yeah. and you know. Well the Newcastle Knights obviously saw know. something, didn't they? You know? a bargain. Absolute yeah. bargain. Yep. Um, Everyone was saying paid too much for him. Now they're saying they've got an absolute bargain. Yeah, oh, it's, it's so true. It, it, I mean, that's, you know, Brownie, what a, what a good Man, no, great him. work, yeah. Um, last one, Greg Inglis. Freak. I keep on saying freak, freak. to these yeah, boys, yeah. man. Power. Like hundred and something kilos, runs like the wind. Yeah. Longevity in the game. Yeah. You know, second to none. He's Comes his, out in Origin last year. Great bloke. Good yeah. guy. I've never met G.I. Yeah. I've only played against him. Um, and, and like Origin last year, he's at the end, twilight of his career. Mm. And he delivers something we haven't seen before of this crazy defense. Yeah, I know. You're like, I know, man. Where yeah. the fuck did this come from? <laughs> I, th- I thought you just ran over blokes. Now yeah, so, sometimes I think with GI, like, because we've had so many great ones, you know, Smithy, Slater, Cronk, you know, he, he Inglis has got to be right up there. There's no doubt about oh, that. Oh, I, I personally think he's the greatest outside back, you know, barring yeah. Darren Lockyer, because I think he's the greatest ever, but yeah. outside back of all time. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, when it comes to center winger. 
yeah. you know, and that's that's close, very closely, either equal or followed by Mal Meninga and Steve Renoff. Mm. But yeah. I just think like a great. And they're all Queenslanders. What's doing? Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, that, that's just a coincidence, mate. Coincidence. <laughs> but I mean, you, you get GI on his best day. Yeah. Tell me someone is stopping yeah, that bloke. That's right. It's uh, crazy. I agree. Um, you probably. I'm not sure. Do you, do you enjoy? I ask all the boys. His favorite rapper of all time. Man, I'm not a rapper. Not a rap guy. Have favorite artist of all time. Mate, I'm old. <laughs> I'm bald. I'm fat. Bro, I you're gonna, you're, you're I ain't going to be listening to rap, mate. I listen to Elton John and the Foo Fighters. That's you're my going to Elton John when he comes to Australia. Yes, I am. I've been and seen him about <laughs> five or six times already. I want to. I want to take the misses, man. I reckon that'd be incredible. Yeah, mate. He's, he's tremendous. He's my favorite. Oh, really? So I, I, I went to saw him in Eminem, man, and it was like eighty thousand or seventy. It was crazy. I saw him one time on a trip away in Vegas. Really? So, mate, we're in, I was playing with Parramatta. Johnny Morris, Cronulla coach. Yep. Him and I were rooming together with the guru. No one wanted to go and see Elton John. All the boys wanted to go out and that. We'd been there for a few days, so Johnny and I bought tickets in the Coliseum yep. in Vegas. Me and him go and watch Elton John. So there's the two of us, and it's just me and him. So, you know, obviously people are thinking we're a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so we're like, oh, rats. We're like rats, man. So we yeah. sit in the crowd. We're about 10 to 12 rows from the front. Mate, we're singing away. We're yeah. loving it, you know. We're thinking no one's going to know us, you know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we're in yeah, Vegas. Vegas. At the end of the concert, these two old people sitting in front of us, they're like, oh, turn around. They're Aussies. They're like, oh, did you enjoy that? We're like, yeah, we did. They're like, oh, Piggy Riddell, we miss you at the Dragons. And I went, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just carried on like an absolute tool to Elton John, me and Johnny. And now these two people in front of us. <laughs> well, literally, like, what are the chances of like Mate, you in sitting... Vegas? Yeah, yeah. Two Aussies that know rugby and league. They know rugby anyway, league. It was a funny story. Um, and favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time, Mate. You know what? I love Shooter. It's with a good Mark movie. Warburg. It is a great movie. Shooter yeah. and Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can't go yeah. past Shawshank Redemption. Mate, they're they're probably my two favorites. TV show Prison Break. That is a great show. Mate, I'm actually re-watching it right now. Oh, really? Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> oh, man. torture. It's wearing me so down. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, you probably this is going to stump you, but uh, best prank you've ever seen that you could talk about? Best prank? Oh, man, i got no idea. Eh? We've pulled some beauties. Man, the, the best ones I sort of talk about now, everyone sort of knows Richard Mercer, Love Song Dedications. I yep. don't know if you've heard of it from being up in Brisbane. No. He's like the love god. He was on radio here in Sydney and and I think in Melbourne. Um all the boys at the Dragons, we used to ring up and he used to, Timo and I used to know he's, he used to know our numbers. Yeah. So, man, we'd always, every week, we'd be hanging in Wollongong, we'd go out for dinner and then we'd try and ring and talk to Richard Mercer and then we'd just make up these bullshit stories about the boys and their missus and that and then it'd be pre-recorded. So the the, the radio station would say, oh, yeah, thanks for that. They'd finish it all. That was great. Da, da, da. Oh, it'll be on in 45 minutes. Yep. So then... The text messages and phone calls that go out to the whole team, mate. And then everyone had listening on so and so, you know, getting stitched <laughs> yeah, up with yeah. his missus. Oh. Oh, nice. Mate, that was good. always that fun. That is good on always the radio. Fun. The boys getting stitched on the radio. On the radio, yeah. yeah it's good, good, good fun, man. There'd be a huge scandal these days if you did that. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to do <laughs> it these days. Someone would be outraged about it, I'm sure. Um, okay, so yeah, thanks so much for coming on, brother. Um, and so it's 2GB that you do your morning radio show? I do Macquarie Sport, yeah. yeah. Macquarie Sport, owned by the same company, 2GB and Macquarie Sport. Macquarie Sport breakfast show, 5 30 to 10. Yeah, yeah, during the week and then 2GB, the continuous call team weekends. And so um, the, the name of the show is called Macquarie Sport? Nah, the name of the show is called Levy and Riddell. Levy and Riddell. Yeah, so man, all our socials are at Levy and Riddell. Yep, sweet. So check that out. But yeah, thank Thanks, you so much man. for coming on, brother. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good luck with all your stuff too, man. Boom. Doing good. Thank you.